especially because you're a service-based business, you really want to um, make that, sorry, I was just checking my time. All right, I'm still good. You really want to make some sort of um, call to action in the last line of your bio. So maybe it's like a call to action, like um, maybe if you're getting people on your email list, it's download our guide to tackling your kitchen cupboards or something like that. Maybe if you want people to reach out to you because they're going through your honey book and you want them to um, book a discovery call with you or get information on your services because you're going to send them a brochure. So maybe you have something there that says like, click below to jump on a call or click below to get information on working with us. And then your link can be like a link to your honey book contact form. It can be a link to, um, a spot on your website where you have information and then it's got your form there too, your contact form. So really think about how you can not only optimize that click and think about how people are coming into your business and how they might be using it, but also you want to sort of tell people why they should click on it. Um, and you didn't make this mistake, but I see this pretty often on Instagram is you also want to make sure that this link is not a shortened link, like a bitly link. Because people are going to be really hesitant to click on something where they can't tell where they're going. So I really encourage people to make it a long link, even if it's ugly, as long as it has like the URL for your website there, people understand what they're going to be clicking on. And there's no like fear over that. Um, and I know t also people use like Linktree and Milkshake and those kinds of things too. Um, but just make sure you're using um, full links, not shortened links. Ideally, it's something clear like your contact form or you can create like an Instagram landing page on your own website so that you get all that good traffic. Um, but that is something that's really important to think about. So um, am I good, Matt? Keep going. Yeah. One quick thing um, I know. So I just saw this come through from Simcha in the chat, but okay. I know we go through this in the, so we will be sending a downloadable guide for everyone to access towards the end of the webinar. So you can look forward to getting a ton of these Instagram insights and resources in a written guide later on. But um, Molly, would you mind just really quickly kind of highlighting with your cursor what those different areas yeah. that you mentioned. So we talked about like your name, your Instagram handle, your bio, and then your link. So maybe just kind of quickly highlight those areas for the audience. Yes, absolutely. Okay. So this is um, what I'm highlighting right now is your username. So this is what you give people when you're like, I'm at whatever, or when you put your Instagram URL somewhere, it's instagram.com slash imagine organizing. So that's your, your username. All right. This right here in bold, and if you are on your phone looking at this on your own account, this line is right under your profile picture, and it's also in bold. This is your name, and this is the part that's searchable. So this is the one that really deserves your attention. Like, go back to your account when this webinar is over, and this should be the first change you make if you haven't done this on your account. People who search you know, a few uh, a few months ago, I was looking for someone who talked, who like focused on time management. Um, I was like, I need to like get some tips. I need to take better, you know, my days need to get more organized. I literally went to Instagram and I put in the search time management expert. And I found like three accounts, followed a few of them. So that's how people use Instagram. So make sure that this is the one, this is your name. And this is the one that's searchable. And then this underneath is your bio. So right here is your bio where she has professional organizing services, home business unpacking. So I would say for this, you have 150 characters, I believe. Um, and this is where you want to put who you are, how you help people. You really want to spend time here because this is what people are coming to look at when they come to your account. This is kind of your make or break part of your account. Um, and, you know, I really, when I work with people, I spend a lot of time on their profiles because if you think about Instagram and your habits on Instagram, if you go to your notifications and you have a notification that somebody liked your photo or somebody commented on your photo or liked your comment on somebody else's post, and it's a, an account you don't recognize, what's the first thing we all do? We like click on that person to go check them out. So that's what's happening on Instagram is people are coming to our accounts to check us out. And so if your profile is not optimized 
to be perfectly suited for your ideal client and for your um, ideal customer, you are missing out on an opportunity to gain that person's follow. So it's like, this is kind of, it's like putting, if you are spending time worrying about like engaging everywhere and where should you be leaving comments and what hashtags you should be following and all that kind of stuff. If your profile isn't set up correctly and your profile isn't optimized, then you're really kind of doing yourself a disservice because you're not having this like space that re that reflects your business that people come to when they see your little notification or your account show up in their notifications. So that's why it's so important. And that's why I spend like I could spend like hours doing Instagram <laughs> profile audits. I love it. Um, okay, let me keep going. This hold on. Oh, okay, this is the link. Imagine organizing is the link underneath. You can sort of see my mouse change. And then this is the profile photo. So hopefully that helps. Is that good? Any other questions I should answer about that? I think that's perfect. Yeah. If we just want to spend the next couple of minutes going through just like the elements of the different types of content and whatnot, and then we'll go into the HoneyBook side of it. That's perfect. Okay. Perfect. All right. We have like five minutes, right, Mac? Yeah. Five, 10, whatever makes sense for you. Okay. That's good. All right. Um, okay. So just still working sort of from the top down. So here are your um, highlights. And so this is a really great, I talk about highlights as sort of being an extension of your profile. A lot of times people, when they check out your account and they come to your account, they're going to watch through the first couple highlight bubbles um, because they kind of want to see your, your face or they want to sort of figure out what you're about and that sort of thing. And your highlights are like the next opportunity to catch their attention. And especially if you're like, man, I could not fit this important thing in my bio. Sometimes your highlights can be like the best place to put that information. So if you're just starting out with this, one of the things that you could do, I love a start here highlight for people. That should be a place where you do some Instagram stories. So your, your highlights are from your Instagram stories. It's basically Instagram stories that are saved on your profile. And so I love a start here highlight where you are talking about yourself and why, you know, how you got into the business, why you love it, what you're passionate about, what makes you stand out from the rest, keeping it short. You don't want it to be like a huge, long thing. You'll lose people. Um, and then talk about like what services that you offer. Talk about how people can reach out to you and get in touch. Give them sort of this resource that's almost like, you know, if they were sort of like scrolling your website and learning more about you. Put a start here highlight on your profile. It's a great place to start. And then I would just continue to build these out. Like you have a before and after, which I think is fantastic. I would say do before and afters for specific projects. Like do a garage before and after. Do a, you know, master bathroom before and after. Do a kitchen before and after. That sort of a thing. Um, you know, I think the more little detailed snippets you can add to your highlights, and maybe some of these things already live in your stories, and you can just bring them together into a highlight. The more you can do these things, um, you really are giving people sort of an opportunity to view your work. And so it's just one more opportunity to be like, to have that sort of lookbook, to know what it's like to work with you, to give people an idea of the different services. So if you offer different services, like even looking at your, um, your bio, it says home business unpacking, like you could have different highlights for those different aspects of your services that you offer. So really spend some time. And I know it can be overwhelming to be like, Oh, I've got to do my highlights. Like, I tell people just do one a month or if you're really good, do one a week. Just be like, okay, this week I'm going to record my fill in the blank highlight, whatever it needs to be. Um, just slowly build them up. See what you have in your archives that you might be able to put there in the meantime. Um, but they serve your profile really well because they are, again, something else that lets people know like really clearly what it's like to work with you and people watch them. They go to your highlights after they've scrolled your profile they're going to go and click on your highlights. So, um, okay, let's dig into your feed a little bit. Um, I think one of the big, just like overall things that I would say would be a, a really good goal for you would be to kind of land on your brand colors. Like I am all about feeds do not have to be perfectly curated anymore. It does not have to be like photo, you know, quote, photo, quote, like it, it, I am all about sort of a free, free, more fluid kind of Instagram feed. 
However, you still want it to be you. You still want it to be branded so that when somebody sees this photo in their feed, they're going to know, oh, that's Ruth's photo or that's from Imagine Organizing. Like they're going to recognize your brand because you're using the same colors. You're using the same maybe two or three fonts over and over again. Things like that can really be small changes that help to elevate the entire like look of your brand and look of your Instagram account. The other nice thing about that is like when you're going to create something, you're like, oh, I know what color it's going to be. I know what font I'm going to use. And I know what, you know, my logo is going to be on it and I'm done. So in the long run, making those kinds of little decisions and figuring out those things, taking like an hour to figure out and nail down those things can really make a difference because it helps the content creation part come really easily. So that was one of the first things that sort of stood out to me. Um, I love that you include before and afters. I'm, I love before and afters. I love looking at them. But because you give each of them a um, cover image, I think they, they become less like, I, I feel like I want your to be able to scroll your account and get an idea of your work. So if I were you, I would do um, like a carousel post for your before and after, but I wouldn't worry about giving it a cover image because it's kind of like, oh, well, I just want to scroll and see it. I don't want to have to tap in and scroll. So I would say, don't worry about having a cover image like this. I would just start with um, either maybe a picture like this, where you have the photo with some font over it, or just show us the show us the after. I would say start with the after because the before you don't want that like on your you don't want that you know public facing. You want that to be hidden behind because you want people to sort of come to your profile and your photos and see what the results are. You don't want them to see a whole page full of befores. That would be a little depressing. So I would say that is a really um, good idea. I love these kind of bold. Um, photos like this, because I think it's also important on your account to sort of have, especially for service-based, <coughs> that you have something that really like um, speaks to exactly what you do or exactly what you stand for, or maybe like your opinions on things. And I feel like this really, this one really stands out. Like as far as a style goes, I love the simplicity of this. I love the, that it's easy to read. <laughs> and then it's clear about what you do and, and that it's part of that whole story. So hold on, I need to cough. Okay, sorry. So that's something that I would think about. I think that if you, because you are working in people's homes, in a way, I really look at this and it looks like you had a beautiful photo shoot, which I would love to see more of. But I really... Um, <coughs> feel like I want to see more pictures of your work. I see a lot of stock photos and I would love to see, even if it's just shot with your phone. <coughs> Sorry guys. One second. Okay. Even if it's just shot with your phone, um, I think showing like more of what you do would really help your account. Mac, I have to take a break. So I'm gonna let you go for a minute. <coughs> No worries. Um, okay, so this is actually perfect timing for us to be able to transition into kind of the HoneyBook side of things and take a look at um, where that link in bio in your Instagram profile can come into play with the HoneyBook system and what we can do there. So I'm going to start sharing my screen now and we are going to dive into your HoneyBook profile. How are you doing so far, Ruth? I see you're like vigorously taking notes and stuff. Do you have any questions or anything? How are you I'm feeling? I'm feeling great. This has been really helpful. And awesome. And, um, yeah. Awesome. Yeah. Great. And just to clarify too, I saw a couple of chats come in with people saying like, oh, I hope they get to me today. So just to clear the air, we chose one person to be our volunteer for today. Um, and we're going to do a deep dive that's hopefully broad enough for everyone to see the benefit from. But Ruth is our one lucky special individual on screen today. So the rest of you guys, um, just keep your eyes out for when we have these HoneyBook hot seat webinars in the future. This is kind of a series that we hope to keep up. So if you ever see an email about these style of webinars, definitely register for them and you could be the one on screen. Um, okay. So first things first, I want to start off in your account under the contact form because um, actually before I even dive into that, Ruth, I want to hear a little bit more from you about your existing client journey. So 
when you are initially receiving an inquiry, um, are they filling out a contact form on your website and then you're pushing them to a phone call or do you have some kind of in-person consultation or what does that process look like for you? Like what are those first two or three steps? Sure. So um, typically they, they can call or a lot, most of them, 90% or 95% of my um, inquiries come through my website. And so they'll fill out a form that's connected to HoneyBook. Um, and then from there, I call them um, just to get gather information and set up an uh, in-home or in-person consultation. Perfect. Okay, so your ideal scenario is they fill out the form so you kind of have them initially qualify themselves a little bit. Then you reach out to schedule the phone call or you do you cold call them from there kind of? Just um, yeah, I usually just... Yeah, they, it's pretty in-depth, the form. So I have a lot of information about what their needs are. Okay, and great. so I'll text them or call them, you know, as soon as possible. Just they receive an automatic um, email stating that we'll contact them in 24 to 48 hours. Um, and then from there, I'll, I'll give them a call. If they don't answer, I'll text them asking them what's the best time to schedule a call. Perfect. Okay. That makes things easy enough. So just to kind of, again, make this general enough for everyone, the reason I was asking that is because there's several different links that you could put into your bio on Instagram that would essentially feed back to the HoneyBook system. So in Ruth's case, we're going to be using the contact form direct link option, which I'll go into in a couple of seconds. But one of the other options we could have used is the scheduling tool. So if she was someone who liked to do a free consult, so I see this a lot with my business coaches and other businesses, um, they offer like 10 minute free consultation or a 30 minute free consultation. And that's how they get their leads coming in is people want to sign up for that kind of freebie right off the bat. So an example of how that would look is you could have your scheduling tool set up um, with those different availability options once it loads here for me. So you could have those different sessions set up. Oh, this looks funky. I think it bumped me out one second. Um, we'll get you logged back in. But what you could do is you could set up your scheduling tool to showcase your different availability options. And then um, you would be able to have your clients actually book the time directly through that scheduling tool that was linked onto your Instagram. Um, and then that way, HoneyBook would not only collect the information about that client from the scheduling tool, but it would also put that event on your calendar so you could just go straight into that call with them. Um, I do have my, a discovery call um, like option for that. Uh, okay. But, okay, so that could be, yeah, there's a couple of different ways. So we could look into like doing a link tree option in that situation potentially, right? Where one of them is a, you know, contact us here button. And then maybe one is like a discovery call option. Exactly. And then they would have the um, options through the link tree to choose kind of the best fit for them. Um, so those are a couple of different options for you. So under scheduling, like I was saying, this is where you would go to set up the different options for sessions. So yeah, you've got your discovery call here. This is perfect. Um, so then your clients, you could have this link. So you would copy the link here and add it to your link tree. And then it would take clients to this page um, to choose from the availability options to be able to go ahead and schedule that discovery call. My computer is working very hard right now, you guys. So thank you for bearing with the loading times. Um, so this is essentially what your clients would go to from your Instagram page if this was your link in bio, or you could have that link tree option where it says discovery call, and then it would take them here. So that's one option. But like I said, I want to focus on the contact form specifically for you, Ruth, um, because I think this is the best way that your current process is working. So I think this is the best thing for clients to be filling out. Um, so let me just take a look here and make sure, do you just have the one contact form? You've got, you've got a bunch of different options here. So what are kind of the different use cases that you have for these? Or do you just have the main one that you use? I, think I just have the main one, yeah. Okay. And this is it here? Yes. Okay, fabulous. Great. So what we have here, we've got full name, phone number. These are all great. What I always do when I'm auditing a HoneyBook contact form is I hover over each 
block of you know question and then i look for these two circles these two circles tell me that this is linked to a smart field which means this information is not only being collected from your client and pulled into honeybook but it's also being pulled into the details tab in the project which subsequently impacts um, contracts that you send later on and auto populates those payment schedules um, lead source reports project types, automations, all kinds of stuff. So as many of these smart fields as you can include in your contact form, the better off you'll be, the more time you'll save, the more organized you'll be in HoneyBook. And a quick way to make sure that you're using as many as are available or as pertain to your business is just to quickly click the plus button. And it defaults to drop you off inside of custom questions, but you'll find all of the smart fields are under the suggested question area here. And that's where all of these smart fields live. So it looks like out of all of the options you have available, you're only using three of them. So including more options could be really beneficial to you because this information will then, like I said, help you save time and so on later on. So um, about section is basically going to pull into the project details about the project section. So this is where you could have the client, you know, list out any specific um, interest that they have in hiring you or any questions that they have for you and your team or anything else that you might want to collect for them. All of these questions can be phrased however you'd like. So the field itself um, might have specific um, things that it's beholden to, but you can always adjust the actual phrase of the question. So let me show you an example. Let me close this down. So for the about section, for example, you might say describe your project, right? And then you would link this to the about section. So a quick fix here is um, just to go ahead and click the plus button under here. We'll go to suggested. We can go to about, and now we'll just change Tell me more about this project. We'll just change this text. And then we can delete this one that is not linked. And now we have this one that is linked. Okay, so that's how I would recommend doing some of those. Um, since this is just, you know, a, a custom question of who referred you, basically, that one I would leave as, you know, it's not going to be linked to anything because there's no option for that. But this how did you hear about us question actually is one of the smart questions that we can add in. So this would be the suggested lead source question. And this one's a huge benefit because it then impacts um, the lead source report in the reporting section in HoneyBook. So this will give you, especially when we're talking about the world of social media, this is really helpful to see um, a very low calorie way to collect data from your clients on how they're hearing about you. Is it word of mouth? Is it through your Instagram? Um, and this could be something that would be cool to maybe even do a little test for yourself to say like, okay, I'm, I haven't updated my profile. I'm going to update my contact form first. I'm not going to update my Instagram profile because I don't have time for it or whatever. And then a month later, when you update your Instagram profile, track that um, traffic that and see that uptick and maybe see how those updates to your Instagram profile benefit the, the inquiries that you're getting and how people are hearing about you. That could just be a cool test to run. Um, so other, lots of location that could be really helpful for you guys. What's their address of the you know job that they're needing to hire you for? Um, project type, I think. There was something in here. Um, actually, maybe not. So project type is helpful specifically when you're looking to group the different types of jobs that you do. So um, have you spent any time adjusting your project types yet, Ruth? Or do you know what I'm talking about? It's kind of hidden. So yeah, I have not. I'm learning a lot right now. Um, okay. Um, but I think I could use it for like commercial or residential is what I'm, yeah. Okay. Yeah. No, this is perfect. So yeah, it looks like you did update these. The reason I say it's kind of hidden is because this list is actually adjusted inside of your company settings, but you can ask the question of them on your contact form. Um, so this is the perfect example of it. And then again, you can change this question to be whatever phrase you'd like, um, you know, what, 
what type of service are you interested in or how would you describe the type of service that you need or whatever. And then this would be the drop down list that they have the options to choose from. This question specifically is one. So if I was going to say, you know, out of all the smart field options in your contact form, which ones are the most important lead source? Because it's super low calorie just to say, how did you hear about us? And let HoneyBook start collecting that information and building out those reports for you. And then project type. Um, this is where you can get really creative inside of HoneyBook. I've seen there's a couple of photographers on our webinar today. So um, depending on the type of photography that you do, maybe this would be your list here. Or if you're only a wedding photographer, maybe this would actually just be your list of packages. Um, so it really just kind of depends on how your business is organized on how you want to list out these project types. But the value of this question um, comes when you are looking at your pipeline, because one of the columns that you have access to filtering by is project type. Um, so I can show you guys that in a couple seconds just to give you the visual on it, but you can filter and see the different categories of like commercial versus residential versus staging um, and really see. So you can click into the stages, obviously. So all of your inquiries, how many are residential of all your booked projects, how many are residential? And it just gives you a lot more of a clear view without having to manually adjust that every single time. And you can always go back and adjust it later on if your client chooses the wrong thing or something too. So it removes that margin for error. And then the other value with project types is this is how you can get very tailored automations to start sending out. So if you know that you have specific messaging that you want to go out to all your commercial folks after they inquire or after they submit payment or after they sign a contract or any of the different triggers that are available in automations, you can make it so those automations are tied to the project type which comes in through the contact form. So it really is what triggers that very initial automatic process in HoneyBook, which I would say is probably the most crucial element of including this question in the contact form. So if you're someone who's interested in automating your process at all, the project type is really like that critical piece of using HoneyBook automations from the get-go because your other option is just to manually apply automations or say anytime a contact form is submitted, regardless of these project types, I want these messages to trigger. So that's an option as well, which I think is maybe what you have set up currently, Ruth. Um, I mean, it's pretty general. My automations are pretty general, but I would love to get to that point to yeah. uh, separate it out. Yeah, definitely. And it's, you know, it's something that comes down the road for a lot of people. I would say this is probably one of the most advanced things to consider in the HoneyBook system is how you can start to automate from contact form submission and even down to project types. So don't let that overwhelm you. It's more so just like ammunition information that you have going forward, knowing that you can use the tool when and if you decide. Um, but that would be my main advice in the contact form is just to look through those suggested question types, see where you can update things. Um, did you want me to leave these changes in here? I won't publish them, so they won't be live, but you can just use them as a resource. Okay, great. Well, yeah, so that was really my main um, suggestion there or my suggestion to anyone leaving here today. Just pop into your contact form and quickly audit it in the way that I just did to make sure as many of these little suggested question types as you can include are there. And then the final piece is to add this link to your Instagram bio. So depending again on how you'd like to organize this or manage this, you can have the link in bio just be this contact form. So you can come down here to copy the link. But if you wanted to get like a quick glimpse at what your clients would see, the direct link HoneyBook contact form is essentially just a standalone form. And it might not load for me because I made all those changes, but we'll see. Um, it's essentially just a standalone contact form, there we go, where your clients can be directed to fill this out rather than going to your website and maybe be distracted by other things. This is a very clear call to action, contact us, submit this form, which is what we're looking for. You always want to make sure that your calls to action are very clear. Um, I don't know if Molly has any opinions on Linktree versus like a very clear link in bio um, option. What do you think, Molly? 
Yeah. I mean, I generally tell people that they should, if possible, build something on their own website or use like a clear HoneyBook um, link because you, since somebody asked this and I was was watching the chat and somebody asked this in the chat too. Um, Linktree is great if you need it in between, but you want to bring people to your website and so you can, it, t- it takes, it doesn't take a lot of work to like build the version of Linktree or build a version of Milkshake on your own website. So like have a landing page that people come to on Instagram. I mean, on your website from Instagram that has the link to, you know, book a discovery call or go to your contact form or download your freebie or get on your email list because then you have a better chance of having them explore your website. Like you've brought them to your website and then they might stay and look around. So that's really what I kind of recommend. Yeah. Yeah. And if we ever did like a SEO webinar, we haven't done one yet, but if we ever did. That's a good topic. This is <laughs> the, the exact <laughs> thing that we would need to touch on because you want that traffic to your website. Mm-hmm. That's what makes you more searchable on Google. That's what gets you higher up in the search there. So the more traffic you can get onto your website, um, the better off. So I love that idea of doing kind of a landing page on your site and just linking to that. Um, cool. Okay. We are basically at the 10 minute left mark. So I am going to do some magic quickly and post a poll for everyone to take. If you guys wouldn't mind just letting us know what you thought of today's webinar on a scale of one to 10, it's literally just one question. Let me know what you think. I am also- clock attack. <laughs> What's that? <laughs> Minus the cough attack. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yeah. Um, and, and then the other thing I'm going to do here is post our guide. Um, oh, maybe it already shared. Did you guys already get the guide? Did you get it, Ruth? Did you see it pop up? Yes, I see it. It's under okay. Okay, perfect, perfect. And then under the offers, I am going to post all of the information you need to get in touch with Molly right now. So if you're interested in having Molly audit your Instagram or you want to hire Molly as a HoneyBook Pro to help you understand your HoneyBook account better, um, that is how you can get in touch with her. So that'll actually take you right out to her HoneyBook contact form. Um, So at the least, she can help you set up the contact form probably. Um, And that is all of that. And then I want to go through all of the questions that we have. So um, Ruth, I don't know if you have any questions that you want to start out with, or we can give you some time back while we answer some audience questions. Yeah, I think I'm good to go. I really awesome. enjoyed it. Yeah. Okay, great. Well, thank you so much. You're our brave soul today being up here on screen. Yes, thank us, you. Letting us air all your stuff online. So we so appreciate it. Um, I'm just going to Um, go ahead and mute you and bump you off just so we can answer these other questions. But thank you so much for your time Uh, today. Great. I appreciate it. Thank you. Thanks, Ruth. Okay. Awesome. Let's dive into these questions here. We have a ton. Um, I'm going to start with a couple that I just grabbed from the chat because I think they might get lost um, since a lot of those came through the Q&A section. So Uh, Shauna Kay is a photographer and, um, she has her name as ETX newborn photographer as the name. Um, but she does more than just newborn photography. So she's wondering if she should change that or if she should consider the location or put it in the bio section instead. So I know you kind of went through a lot of this, but for her specific scenario, Yeah. So, um, I would say for you, I don't, I'm not sure what your username is, but, um, that's sort of the tricky thing, especially when you have, I I think, especially for photographers, this is hard because that is such a long word and it takes up so much space. Um, so I would say, think about, um, and you can always test that is the, that's also the answer to everything. It's like, you can always test things and make changes. You're not, you don't have to marry whatever change that you make. So I would say if there's something that you want to attract right now, like if let's say you were, you're shifting and you want to focus more on seniors or something like that, I would put that in your name line and, and just play with that for a little bit and sort of see what happens and see if you're bringing in more of that type of work that you're looking for. Um, So I would just sort of play around with different things, but I would say for you, your location is going to be really important. So make sure you include that or some abbreviated version of that. And then the thing you want to focus on the most. 
Perfect. Okay, cool. Um, and then we had someone who is in the retail space, so selling goods rather than services, and they mm -hmm. were wondering if they should still be including a personal image or if it should be the logo. They were trying to decide brand versus like personal brand. What do you think on that? So I think for you, especially, you know, if you have a retail space, I think you could use your logo and your profile picture. I just want to see you in your feed. That's what I would say to that. Like, you know, obviously you want that brand recognition for your logo too. Um, but I, I want to, I would want to see faces. Like I would want to scroll the feed and see you or your team or that sort of thing in your feed. Awesome. Um, okay. And then one other question that we got, which I feel like I could maybe answer this based mm -hmm. off of the information that we've gotten, but they're saying how important is the location and or region if you're offering online services and location isn't as important. So I feel like with everything we've been talking about today, it's really just important to let your clients know when they're coming to your Instagram, where they can find you and who you service. Mm -hmm. So are they a fit for your business? So mm -hmm. location in that sense, if you're an online business, right? You just want to let them know servicing, you know, an international clientele or something. What do you, what's your opinion on that, Molly? Yeah, I agree. I think, you know, if you look at mine, I, I used to have my location in there, but um, I, I mostly work online now. So I don't have my location. If you, you wanted to sort of, you know, one thing I do do is I do tag location in my posts. Mm -hmm. So that way, you know, if somebody in Baltimore or Philly or Lancaster, you know, if they want to hire me for something in person or they just want to know where I am, I do put location um, and target some locations around me. But I think you do not have to include it if you're not location based. Cool. Um, we had a question come through from Colette. Um, this is kind of a lengthy one, so hopefully I don't mess up reading it. Um, she says she received a prompt on Instagram to be able to change her visible name and DMs only. The profile name stayed the same, for example, NC Photographer, but in DMs, clients and friends would see Colette. Do you know how we can manage that? Some of my friends did it immediately, and I've never <laughs> seen the location to do this again. Help. Maybe this is just a situation of Googling. I don't know. What do you think, Molly? I mean, this is one of those tricky things where like Instagram tests little things and like, you know, a hundred people will get it and nobody else gets it. So I would say go to your account, go to your settings and see if you can find it in there. Just like cl click on everything and see if you can find it. I do know that um, I have heard of people having that where they have a different name in the DMs than they do on their profile, but I don't I, I feel like it's probably one of those things that Instagram, you know, gave a yeah. few people access to. So there might not be a clear answer. So I'm sorry. I can't help you with that one. Yeah. Um, full disclosure, when Reels came out, I had to record some Reels for HoneyBook. And I literally spent two hours Googling and learning how to make Reels on Google. So do not be ashamed yeah. of this. I'm a millennial. I'm 28 years old and I did not how to know how to figure them out. So <laughs> don't worry about it. If that's something that's a concern, it is a learning curve for everybody. So don't, there's no shame in that. Um, Andrea says, as for a wedding professional, this is kind of along the theme of another um, question that I saw come in or con some consistent questions that we saw come in. Um, they want to have a variety of themes in their space um, that don't actually have the same colors or one of the other questions we got was as a photographer, you're obviously posting mm -hmm. with your very distinguished photography, you know, taste and the way that you change your lighting and all of that stuff. So how, how should those brands or those service providers consider the idea of consistent branding and colors and things like that when mm -hmm. they're posting, as you mentioned? Well, I think you're still like, I think your, your photography style sort of speaks to like curation of your feed because you're, you're going to be, you know, a certain style and that's going to be what makes you stand out. Mm -hmm. However, if you were going to like, say you were creating hi highlight covers and you wanted to do those in a color or say you were, maybe you put a quote in there or something like that, that you put into the mix. I think about what colors you're using on your website, what fonts you're using on your website. And I would bring those over to Instagram. Awesome. Um, and this Andrea's question, I think specifically <laughs> too, as like, um, a variety of themes. So I think she's a venue based off of oh. the way she asked the question. So oh, she has so like a, variety a variety of themes 
inside of the space itself. Um, I'm actually a bride right now. So I feel like I can speak to this a little bit. And in the same context of like how we were talking about doing different highlights and things, maybe you could have different highlights at the top of your account that have different themes like moody darks or spring brights. Like I think actually when I was venue shopping, I saw a venue that depending on what date I inquired about or what season I inquired about, they had a different like honey book brochure that they mm -hmm. sent me with different images and different colors that different brides had had in the past based off of that season. So maybe like work with the seasons that way. That could be a cool, what do you think Molly? No, I love that idea. And I also think too, like if you wanted to make sure you still sort of maintain like, a, like some cohesiveness, yeah. you could think about things like maybe you want to put some like image, um, like quotes or maybe like informational posts or something where you're using your brand colors to sort of mix. So it's not just like photos where like one photographer is, you know, bright, light and airy and one's dark and moody. And you're just feeling like, oh, it's all over the map. So maybe you could sort of manipulate it a little bit or even like as the seasons change, your feed changes. I see some people do that too. Yeah. So that might be two ways you could sort of bring that cohesive feeling. Cool. Okay. And you guys, I, I gave you my warning. We're not going to get through all the questions and here we are at time. And I think we have like 10 unanswered questions. So oh. I am sorry for that, oh. but hopefully you guys got a lot out of this. Molly, thank you. Yes. And Mac, I have to say a quick shameless plug. I do have um, an Instagram right. community that is open right now. It's it's um, for women. Sorry guys, but it's called the social circle and that's open right now too. It's an awesome community where we do like master classes and a great community of women too. So yes. Yes. You can find out about that. It's on my Instagram account too. Yes. So. And only open once a year, right? So you guys, your timing is like perfect to be here and learn from Molly and get involved in that social circle program that she has. It's amazing. So definitely check her out on Instagram. Um, her Instagram name is just Molly Blint. I will post the link to that one more time. Yep, it's um, Molly.Blint. There's a dot in there. Right. There we yes. go. Okay, perfect. All right. Awesome. Thank, Thank you, Max. You so this was much. fun. Thank you for fighting through the cold. I hope you yeah. feel better. Thank you. <laughs> All right, everybody. Have a good one. Bye, guys. Thank bye you. Bye.